Hey everyone, welcome to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is the Fiat 131 body from Rally Legends. This particular body was ready to run and it came with this chassis right here. We're not going to focus on the chassis right now. What we are going to do, however, is deal with this front end, which is hideous. It looks like at some point there was supposed to be an injection molded part here, but probably due to cost, it was removed. So what I've done here is replicated that in a 3D printed part with a actual grill and headlight buckets and all that. So we need to pull all of this out. Looking on the inside, it's not going to be that easy because they've done an excellent job installing this. Here we have these little headlight pods, which are keeping the headlights aligned and also the side marker right there. So my plan is to use a flush cutter and snip away right here and then very carefully prying this off of the body. Now if it peels the paint in the grill area, that's not a big deal because we're moving the grill anyway. But what we do not want to do is damage the paint outside the grill. So again with the flush cutters, we're just going to snip, being careful not to take out any of the paint. Fortunately the car is white so it's easy to touch up. They had molded a small gusset right there which I'd cut out and the idea is I've got half of this headlight bucket area cut. I cannot reach the back so I'll score it lightly with a razor blade, pry this area up and just bend it back and forth a few times and hopefully that breaks it loose. I'm going to take this flat bladed X-Acto knife and I'm just going to kind of just try and pry it in here. Well, that came up easier than I thought. So there, that's up. Now the question is, how do I get the rest of this off? After a little bit of wiggling, this came out, but I noticed that all the paint in here was chipped. And then when I was looking at an earlier photograph, I noticed that all this was already here. So I was initially very upset that I damaged the car, but it turns out that it was there already. And again, it's white, it's easily touched up. I've got both of them out. I saved this little piece that broke off here because the actual headlights themselves are going to be pretty useful as headlight doors for other applications. They did use super glue to hold these lights in place, which is great. So a little bit of poking and prodding and eventually the glue will come off. I'm gonna use the scalpel, but please be very careful because these X-Acto knives or scalpels, whatever you want to call them, very dangerous. And what I want to do is just cut the seam away of the glue, steering clear from the wires, of course. If I can just break that seal, it should pop right out, just like that. Now that our headlights and electronics are out, we're going to take the X-Acto knife, and we are going to just simply run it along the inside corner of this recess. And do not apply very much load. Okay, you don't want the force to cut, you want the repeated passes to slowly carve away a, a channel into the plastic. And always cut away from you, please. Okay, this being Lexan, eventually the blade will just drop right in. So it's important not to have your hand behind. I'm just going to fold it up a few times and this should just, there you go, so it came right out. Right, and here is our replacement grill. Now we're going to want to do some prep work to this, like some light sanding and painting and all that, but let's make sure this fits first. Okay, and that is about where it's supposed to be. Before we paint the grill, I want to go ahead and sand down some of the stepping that occurred during the 3D printing process. So the ultra detail printing from Shapeways is incredibly clean, but you are still going to get some very, very, very light stepping, and we want to just sand that down. It should be pretty darn simple. I mean, just a couple passes, and it'll clean it right up. I mean, you can see I just barely have done it. And with the Fiat emblem itself, we'll just take this face down on some 400 grit sandpaper and just give it a couple passes back and forth. Nothing too dramatic. There we have it. Remember that your prints from Shapeways are going to be translucent and not in this black color, but it's the exact same printer. The paint job is complete and I like this matte look here. I'm now going to take my chrome paint pen and I'm going to paint the five raised areas to be chrome. All right, the horizontal bars are painted. Right, we've got the little Fiat emblem here that goes on the grill. I'm going to paint this white, but I'm going to do a base coat of silver because it'll help the white pop a little bit better. The proper orientation of the grill is to have the two extra bars below the Fiat emblem, so one above and two below. I'm going to take some of my high quality model glue and just apply some in this recess. Okay, I'll put a little bit in between two and we'll take some tweezers and we will just drop the emblem right in place and just go ahead and make sure that it is in fact 
even and equal. As soon as that dries, I'm going to paint the inside areas of these headlight doors a silver color so that the headlights look a little better when you put the lens on. Again, I used my liquid chrome pen and I went ahead and painted in the headlights. Now we have to put the lenses in. These are the lower auxiliary spot lamps. The car originally had these two and these two, but as you can see here, this rectangular area is where the turn signal should be. So I will omit those and drop in these guys here. Now they can go in either orientation and we'll go in just like that. Please make sure that you do pre-tap these holes here with an M3 screw. And you also should be able to use the screw that came with this car to mount those. I have sanded them down and painted them black, but I still have to paint the inside chrome. The lenses for these are actually the standard lenses that I use on a number of my Tamiya cars. These are my buggy lenses, so these will just drop straight on top. There is no orientation pin because that's not how these lenses were designed, and that's how they're going to look. Those are not the only lenses though. These are the remainder of lenses that we need for the car. Now this is specific to the 131. We do have these four round lenses. These lenses are keyed. You can see that little notch right there. So they all go in the same orientation. We also have the turn signal and parking light combination here. And these are little caps to cover the three millimeter LED poking its way out here. The downside that we have with both the turn signals and the side marker caps is that there is no way to actually screw them on so you are going to have to glue all of these in place the holes here at the rear are to put leds to give these a more transparent appearance i will apply a light coat of clear enamel paint on both sides please do not leave these in hot sun to dry because i have in some instances seen larger panels warp so just make sure that these are in the shade all the lenses have been clear coated and the side markers are actually still drawing right now. So we'll just focus on these for the time being. I'm going to take a model glue. This is an, a pretty old model master modeling glue, but any high quality model glue will work. I just run a bead directly around the perimeter here. It's okay if it gets on the side. Take your light and please note that on the back side, you do have that little notch right there. So it can only go in one direction and this will just drop straight in like that. All of the headlight lenses are in place now. Let those dry and we'll focus on the auxiliary lights. For the auxiliary lights, you're going to want to tap these. So these will be available in both the high detail plastic as well as the nylon. But for both cases, I would recommend that you tap them. Do this before you put the lens on. Now that these are tapped, we'll use that same high quality model glue and put a bead right along the perimeter. Once that is done, we can drop in the lens. But remember that this lens is not keyed. So you will need to ensure so that this is horizontal. There's also no up or down with these. This can go in either this orientation or 180 degrees around. Holes horizontal. I will drop the cat head directly on. Do the other one as well. Just wanted to show off the front turn signal slash parking light. I put some chrome paint on the back so that none of the green decal shines through. There are also several paint schemes for this car, so it's possible that a darker one would make the orange or the clear look the wrong color. Unfortunately, due to their geometry and where the LEDs have to go, there's no way to install these other than using some kind of a flexible adhesive. I'm going to use shoe goo, but you can also use a clear silicone adhesive. Before we do that, we should prepare the body. We need to drill a five millimeter hole here and here, and just make sure that these small holes are large enough to accept the LEDs. I'm going to do that by using this body post hole driller. And we'll just drop it right in the middle. And please, if you have one of these, be incredibly careful because they're very, very sharp. If you do not, you can use a small drill bit to make a pilot hole and then make it larger very slowly with uh, progressively larger bits. You're going to want to clean off any additional adhesive. The stickers where they were bunched up because it's not going to let the lights sit flat. There are my five millimeter holes. And now I can go ahead and take my headlights, making sure that the little Marshall cat head is in the correct orientation and screw them in from the back. So looking on the back side, we have the holes for the LED and then the auxiliary lights are held on with the original screws, which are M3 screws. And there they are. Next, let's deal with these side markers. To install the grill, I've got my hot glue gun. Now you don't have to use hot glue, but the hot glue is going to help the grill to stay in place very, very quickly. I'm going to flip this over and we just want to drop that grill in and make sure that it's going to seat properly. Now we've already checked this, but it's always good to double and triple check. So once we know roughly how it's going to sit, we can get the hot glue and get ready to put some on the perimeter. Making sure that it's in the correct orientation, we can start to apply a little bit of hot glue in a couple of areas, then flip it back over quickly and make sure that it's in the correct depth. Once we have confirmed that, we can put a little bit more maybe on the sides here. And then just double check, keep double checking 
Make sure that the grill hasn't moved. As you continue to do this, the grill will begin to move less and less and the structural integrity will increase. Okay, and once you know that it's perfect, you begin to put it around the entire perimeter where the headlights are. Be careful on the grill because the entire grill section is open and it'll be very, very easy to plug one of the grill vents with the hot glue. As you can see, I've just got it around the headlights. And now from the front, we've got our grill fitted. Let's move on to these turn signals. What I want to do to install these is make these holes a little bit bigger because I want to make sure that the LED has enough room to sit. These do not have very much depth at all, so the way that they're going to sit is to just stuff the LED so that the tip is in and then use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. I have a clear shoe glue that, I want, that I'm going to use for this application. Now it's going to be critical to apply enough shoe glue in this area to allow the marker to sit permanently, but not enough to have it bulge out around the sides. So I'm going to use this little screwdriver and just apply it a little bit in the center, around the perimeter a bit here, and don't let it come out too far. The shoe glue is pretty good at clean up after the fact, but you don't want to make a mess, which I think I'm kind of doing right now as it is. Now on the actual 131, the marker goes in in this orientation, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop this straight, straight in like that, and the shoe glue should keep it in place. If it's not staying put, you want to test fit it first, and oftentimes it's just some of the sticker that's causing it to fit properly, so just trim it, and then it should stay put. At this point, all the lighting has been installed. You can see if I flip it over, I've also routed all the wires. There's one last thing we have to focus on, and that is the side repeaters. What they did was just push a three millimeter LED through the side panel, which is pretty acceptable given the fact that these repeaters on the real car are quite small. However, we've come this far, we might as well keep on going. And this is the replacement lens for the repeater. To install this, you're just gonna line up the LED with the inside of the little bucket, and we'll take, once again, the shoe goo, apply a small amount on top of the LED and you want to keep it on the LED because it'll squish out around it. If you put too much, it'll be difficult to clean the body. So we'll just put it right there, right on top and just very carefully wiggle it on in until it comes to a stop. Here's the finished product. Oh wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What was I thinking? That's no way to reveal a car with lights. This is, yes, there's a lot of lights there. Let's hang a right turn. Left turn. Now, theoretically, this light should be flashing as well. European, Japanese, in fact, most cars other than US specified cars would usually have this side marker as a repeater. So these aren't usually turned on unless you're in the United States where you would have a dedicated marker on the side, which stays on. But this really should be flashing. I just don't feel like chopping up the wiring to get that to work. This came out a lot better than I thought. I had backed the entire inside of the fender in several coats of silver paint so that you're not getting a glow and it really, really came out nicely. Of course, in the front of the car, I did go with the yellow lights here on the middle of the 131 grill. I am uncertain if that is how any of the rally cars were. I, I personally don't care, <laughs> uh, but I've always been a fan of cars with quad headlights having the insides uh, in yellow. So these, they look a little orange here in the camera, but these are actually quite yellow. Even though we did no work to the rear, let's just turn that around anyway. I will be painting the outsides of these later so that they're just not all white if we hit our brakes. Turn left, turn right, and we'll hit our brake, uh, reverse. I would like to have these illuminate as well at some point. To the keen-eyed observer, you'll notice that here on the inside of the front signal, there is a clear lens. Now this should be on as well. This is a parking light, and unfortunately I simply ran out of ports on the light module. Again, it's something that we will deal with in the future, but just please know that that should be illuminated. That looks fantastic more accurate the way I wanted it. And of course I did save that original front grill and I think here we've got a, a pretty good improvement on our original design. And please note the original, just note that originally this model did have four auxiliary lights here at the bottom and I have seen images where the car did have the four, but I felt that it was just a little too many for me and I did want to have these operational. I do hope you enjoyed this video. I know there's a lot of folks out there that are as obsessed with lighting as myself and for you this must have been a treat in particular. Thank you all so much for watching and we will see you soon.